This is 7 News, the voice of the coast. Tonight, one person dead, two men in custody after a day-long manhunt on the mid-north coast. Compensation unlikely for Optus customers after one of the worst outages in history. I'm Daniel Gibson. Later on this news hour, dozens of firefighters race to stop a house fire from spreading. And Aussies struggle with the interest rates, but the NAB post almost $8 billion in profits. 7 News begins now. Good evening. Two people are in custody tonight following an intense manhunt on the mid-north coast. One person is dead and another injured after a shooting spree that spread from Taree up to Kempsey with a gunman firing at random. Samantha Crow is live in Port Macquarie after covering the police operation today and Sam, residents have been on edge. Absolutely, they have been. Nick, some residents were told to stay inside and lock their doors. Schools did the same. We were warned there was a shooter on the loose and a major police operation underway. This afternoon, two men aged 26 and 32 were arrested in Kempsey. Dramatic arrest scenes in Kempsey. Police move in on two men hiding in scrub on the bank of the Maclay River. The pair pulled from the bushes, thrown to the ground, handcuffed and carried away. It follows a day-long manhunt for a shooter suspected of killing one person, firing at police and injuring another. A body was discovered early this morning laying on Fernbank Creek Road in Port Macquarie, triggering a search of the surrounding area. Residents were warned to lock their doors and stay inside. They wouldn't really tell me anything about what's going on. I was just told to stay inside. The shooting spree started at Coopernook, south of Port Macquarie, where a motorist sustained a bullet graze to the arm. Shots were then fired at vehicles in Telegraph Point and Cundabung. A police car was shot at on Fernbank Creek Road, the same road that body was located. It certainly suggests uh, the information that we have at the moment, they were random incidents. Um, we can't find any link at this stage between... Uh, the victims or, or any potential POIs. This morning, a dark grey Mercedes dual cab ute, which was believed to be used in the shootings, was located at Wayne Richards Park in Port Macquarie. Forensic testing of that vehicle is underway. Wayne Richards Park has been evacuated and is being treated as an additional crime scene. Police are searching the surrounding streets and bushland. Police door knocking the streets in the vicinity looking for two people, one of them a man of Aboriginal appearance and approximately 30 years old. A bit chaotic down there, especially having young children in the area, knowing that somebody's running around. It, it is a lot scary, yeah. Nearby schools locked their doors with no one allowed in or out. It wasn't until 3.15 this afternoon that the two suspects were located and arrested. Mid-North Coast residents in shock over the day's frightening events. We don't expect that sort of stuff to happen here. Um, pretty shocking, to be honest. Sam is back with us now. And Sam, do we know what triggered today's events? Nick, at this stage, the police still believe that those shootings were random, but it will be part of their investigation moving forward. It's not yet clear if the two men who have been arrested have any links to the victim or to Kempsey or Port Macquarie. In total, four vehicles were shot at and police also suspect more than one weapon was used in these crimes. At this stage, police are still searching for the firearms involved in today's offences. Uh, the offenders have only been in custody for about an hour, uh, so as part of our investigation, we will retrace where they've been and uh, continue to search for those weapons. Police have assured the public that they are safe and that they're not looking for any further suspects. OK, thanks for the update, Sam. That's Samantha Crow reporting live in Port Macquarie. Two weeks on from the Nimboida bushfires, it's been confirmed that 90 homes were saved in the blaze. However, three homes and 16 outbuildings were destroyed. Those who lost their homes, especially temporary dwellings, are desperate for more help. Only a few burned springs remain of Danny Evans' new bed. He had lots of water pumps, tanks and irrigation to fight, but all destroyed after he fled the fire. And you can't ever be prepared enough. That's, that's one message I'd like to get out, you know. Like, uh, I'd done dry runs with all this stuff and I thought it was good. Uh, but when push came to shove, the sprinklers were clogging, the whole water system was clogging out of the tanks. Losing also his camper van home he lived in after the Rapville fires. In those fires I lost a lot of personal things that were quite important to me. I lost my grandfather's watch. Today, RFS helicopters mapped hotspots for ground crews to stamp out. We had 
10 loads of water at least dropped by a chopper. So that aerial support was incredible. Not only were there choppers, there were three choppers here. There were fixed wing planes that were picking water down at the dam. These Nimboida fire survivors met today in a rebuilt home. As soon as this fire started coming this time, it just brought up the fear and flight and all the stuff that I went through last time. As today is the four-year anniversary of the fires which took out 85-plus homes in Nimboida, emotions are pretty high at the moment, particularly in defence of those who are fighting to get support this time. The people who were living in temporary dwellings, uh, that there needs to be some way to assist those people beyond the non-profit. It's hard enough to go out and ask someone for it, but they'll turn you away, you know. Um, and it's it just doesn't seem to be there and I don't get it. I don't get it why, why Centrelink won't give a thousand dollar disaster relief payment. Like This is a disaster. Member for Page Kevin Hogan has contacted the Federal Ministry for support. Claire Simmons, 7 News. Fire crews are continuing to mop up a number of blazes in the Tenterfield Shire. Nearly 50,000 hectares has been burnt so far. The fires remain at advice level and are all now under control. Heavy machinery has been brought in to clear dangerous and hazardous trees in the area. A bushfire recovery centre has been set up at the Tenterfield Memorial Hall for anyone affected by the fires and in need of help. Local businesses are calling for compensation after millions of Australians were affected by the Optus outage. They say the fiasco has cost them dearly after banking and mobile services went down. Left in the dark and refused compensation. Yesterday's fiasco was a disaster. More than 10 million Optus customers are feeling the pinch after services went down for more than 12 hours yesterday. Business suffers enough in this country. Um, and things like that we really just don't need. Since Ballina was impacted by the outage, owner Jody Ollis says she couldn't make or receive any calls, instead resorted to social media to try to keep on top of business. Yeah, well, I could have lost potentially lost um, new customers. Um, I could have uh, lost customers from today, which then I wouldn't have been able to fill appointments for t being today, you know, in short time. Frame. Now an inquiry into the outage is being looked at by the Senate and Federal Government, hoping to give Australians an explanation as to why connectivity went down. Did Optus put profits ahead of the public interest? That's what Australians are asking today and that's what they deserve answers to. Some locals agree people should be compensated, while others say it's just bad luck. Yeah, it was chaos yesterday. I've got um, family that have got Optus. And yeah, it was not good. Of course, there were so many businesses put out and people. Um, yeah, sure. They paid for the service, for sure. I don't think so. I just think it's part of doing business in Australia. Um, if you're out, you're out. And I'm, I doubt that Tel uh, Optus would have um, planned to be out. Um, and they would have got it back on as quick as they could. So. In a statement to 7 News, Optus said from Monday, eligible postpaid customers, including small businesses and consumers, will be able to access up to 200 extra gigabytes of data. Prepaid customers will receive unlimited data on weekends until the end of the year. Elise Holden, 7 News. The backlash continues over the loss of triple zero calls to Optus customers in the nationwide system failure. In Nimboida today, electrical crews were out restoring power to the Optus towers. As the only local tower, it carries all the mobile emergency calls. But power was also lost in the fires a fortnight ago. A temporary generator was put in to run the tower after three days of no service. So Optus, I don't know what you're doing, but leave a generator out there permanently and set it to come on when the power goes out and none of this would have happened. You know, everyone would have... It was panic, absolute panic, and no-one can make a phone call. RFS crews had asked residents to call triple zero if their homes came under threat. Coffs Harbour councillors are meeting tonight in their new chamber for the first time since the Gordon Street building opened. Claire Simmons joins us live now. And, Claire, the new council structure opened seven weeks ago. 
Maddie, Yarrilla Place opened on September 16, a couple of months behind schedule and at a cost of $82 million. The original budget was $76 million. Councillors continued to meet in the old chambers while finishing touches were completed to the upper floors. Thanks for the update, Claire. Claire Simmons reporting live there for us tonight in Coffs Harbour. The New South Wales suburbs most at risk of coastal erosion have just been revealed. Yamba, Port Macquarie and Palmer's Island sitting among the top 20 locations. Byron Bay's infamous main beach also sits at number 11, the popular spot disappearing in wet weather. InfoTrack, the organisation behind the report, warns erosion will affect more than just beachgoers. This information is absolutely critical for a home buyer today. It'll affect their ability to borrow money, their insurance premiums and the future value of their home. While Old Bar isn't in the firing line for now, it will sit among the most at-risk locations in the next three decades. Well, Kirsty joins us now for a look at today's weather and Kirsty gloomy with some showers around today. Yeah, that's right, Maddie. Nick, hello to you both and good evening, everybody. We did see some unsettled conditions today. It was mild, though, with temperatures increasing. Cloudy with showers, certainly for southern parts of the region this morning, about Taree and Foster, further inland around Dorigo as well. That was before storms and lightning moved through Coffs Harbour, around Nambucca Heads, and even into parts of the northern rivers about the mid-afternoon. Temperatures to Today, up around the mid to high 20s and it did feel relatively muggy. Very windy northeasterly winds at Ballina up at more than 40 kilometres an hour. Showers easing to a mostly cloudy evening but we are expecting some areas of rainfall again tomorrow. We'll have a look at that forecast a little later on in the bulletin. Sounds good. Thanks Kirsty. We'll see you soon. Still to come in 7 News, a new home care hub opens its doors in Ballina. And Catholic Care reaches a significant milestone 10 years in the making. And a little later on this news hour, a smoke alarm saves a family just in time as their townhouse burns to the ground. The first of the big four to raise interest rates again, now reporting a multi-billion dollar profit. And Israel cops intense global scrutiny over its Gaza exit strategy. Welcome back. Catholic Care have hit a milestone serving 100,000 meals for people in need in the Manning Great Lakes. While they are proud of the achievement, they say it's a major reflection on how tough it is for many at the moment. 100,000 meals delivered to those in need. Catholic Care in Tari and Foster have been serving meals for people in the area since 2015. I like to participate in the community and I feel this is a really valuable way to help people who are in need. While they're proud of the achievement, they recognise it's no time for celebration. The impact for us, we're very proud of the service we provide and we're supporting thousands of people, but we're also very mindful that it's not um, a time to celebrate. It's a really stark reminder that there is community in need. Operating six days a week in Taree and four days in Foster, the team of 160 volunteers are noticing more people who are struggling come through their doors. In the mid coast, our numbers have more than doubled and we really can see that it's an impact of both the cost of living um, increase and personal, personal circumstances as well. The rates still keep coming, the power keeps going up and I'm finding it very tough. The team in the Manning Great Lakes are now at capacity of service and are desperate for community help to keep mouths fed over the Christmas period. Food donations to help our service continue to run or financial um, donations coming into Christmas. Hannah Hartup, 7 News. The New South Wales Tourism Awards for 2023 have just been announced with Mid Coast Council winning the Local Government Award for Tourism on the Barrington Coast. The category is open to all local government authorities and recognises excellence in tourism planning. It also recognises the council's contribution at a local and state level to the tourism industry. A new home care hub has opened its doors in Ballina to support the region's growing ageing population. The new facility is aimed at providing the elderly with support and social connectivity while they continue to live independently. Baptist Care Home Care says as people age, they're more likely to stay at home than move to a retirement village. 
We're seeing such a growth across this region, so we're currently supporting about 500 clients um, within the far north coast region, and we're looking at doubling those numbers in the next three years. Baptist Care hopes to expand its services to Lismore, Korokai and Casino in the future. Up next in 7 News, why there won't be a half-day holiday for next year's Coffs Cup. And three talented Manning Great Lakes athletes off to the National All Schools titles. Tomorrow on Sunrise, the at-home tests for Aussie mums and dads to see if you're living with ADHD and the new treatments that work. Plus, from living in a van and busking on the streets to global fame and fortune, Tones and I performs Dance Monkey exclusively on Sunrise. See you in the morning. Three talented athletes from Foster are ready to compete at the Primary School Athletics Championships in Tasmania. Mixed with nerves and excitement, the kids are hoping to come away with some big results later in the month. The next generation of athletic stars are hitting the track. Bound for the primary school's athletics championships in Tasmania this month. It's a massive effort for them to compete, especially being regional towns. They're competing against big private schools in Sydney. Jack and Alexia will compete in the multi-class categories for long jump and track, while Ella will compete in her favourite event, the high jump. High jump is my favourite event. Um, it's my favourite because it's challenging, like every new height is a new experience, um, every new carnival is a learning experience and like I get to gauge on what I need to improve on and how well I did. The kids just returned from the qualifying state carnival in Sydney with a haul of medals to show for it. Now training hard, getting ready for the championships ahead. So I just like, does I track to my school that I run around every Wednesday? Just like to start like training for when I go down there. Especially, you know, with our multi-class kids, it's a little extra work for them to try and develop those skills, but they're working really hard um, and training to try and make sure that they can be the best that they can be when they compete. As the date creeps closer, nerves and excitement are settling in. Like, too excited. <laughs> Super. Um, I'm hoping for probably a top eight, but a medal would be awesome. Hannah Hartup, 7 News. Half a day off for the Coffs Cup may come to an end tonight as councillors vote on the local event's public half holiday. Numbers were up 10% at the Coffs Cup when organisers changed the date from a Thursday to a Friday. While corporate networking is a big part of the event, plenty of other businesses were forced to pay staff double time to work the afternoon. The event ran for the first time on a Friday and without the usual half day public holiday. Good Friday helped with the travellers, like there was a lot of out of town people, made it a weekend, which is great for the economy. But also I think there was a lot of mums and dads that usually were tied up with that bus route where the schools closed at midday. Councillors vote tonight if they should accept a recommendation not to apply for a local event half day. Lismore City Council is asking locals to have their say on a new skate park in Ganilaba. Keen riders and skaters are invited to head to the park on November 17 to voice their opinions. A free barbecue and sausage chisel will be provided between 4 and 7pm. A number of coaching sessions will also be available for the kids following the night. Lismore Skate Park is also set to undergo a transformation after it was closed in September due to safety concerns. The community has until November 18 to provide feedback on the council's webpage. Still to come in 7 News, Kirsty is back and she's got your all-important local weather forecast. Good evening everyone. A low pressure trough triggered widespread showers and thunderstorms across parts of our state today. This system will continue to deepen tomorrow mainly in the north while onshore winds drive wet weather along our coastline. Following this a high pressure system should bring drier skies and hot temperatures into the weekend and early next week that's ahead of the next wet weather system that looks to sweep through the state from Tuesday. Following tomorrow's wet weather the north coast is likely to see a period of clearer skies around Around 5 to 10 millimetres is on the forecast, though, for parts of the coast with the arrival of that trough into next week. First to our Friday forecast, we are expecting a few scattered showers along the coast tomorrow, driven by those winds pushing that moisture onshore. Around 2 millimetres, but up to 8 millimetres is likely, and we could see thunderstorms around with gusty north northeasterly winds. Most of that wet weather developing to the south. Further north, clearer skies around the northern rivers at Casino with 26 and 20. 
Cape Heads also 26 degrees. On the waters tomorrow, north northeasterly winds around Byron Bay at Coffs Harbour are around 20 to 25 knots. A strong wind warning does remain in place. Further south, though, up to 30 knots, with sea heights increasing to 2.5 metres. On to Saturday, a slight chance of a shower on higher ground, really no more than about a 20% chance. Most of the day is looking partly cloudy, but also windy. Those winds strongest during the middle of the day and then becoming lighter during the evening. Bar and Bay, some cloud cover, 23 degrees. Lismore, the mid-20s, and Evans Head, also a top of 25. To Sunday now, a sunny and warm morning. We can see those temperatures increasing. Foster, a top of 30. Tauri and Warhope, 33 degrees. In the afternoon, a slight shower or storm and those winds are becoming stronger. Casino, 25. And at Tweed Heads, 25 degrees. Certainly a little bit of everything over the next few days. Yeah, it sure is a mixed bag. Yeah. Thanks, Kirsty. Now for a quick look at fuel prices around the region. The best for unleaded in Taree is $1.96 at the United Servo. Diesel is $2.17 at the United as well. In Lismore, the mobile has unleaded posted at $2.04. The Liberty Servo has diesel at $2.20. B&E Doherty at Warhope has unleaded at $1.92 and diesel for $2.13. And at Coffs Harbour, unleaded is $1.89 at the mobile. And Liberty has diesel for $2.15. And that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. You can catch up on our website or, of course, at 7+. Plus. Right now, Dan's got your national news. Enjoy your night. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 o'clock.